about to start removing the original front bumper on this 2023 Wrangler Rubicon. This is the plastic bumper. Don't know why they even bother with it. It's junk. Looks okay, but it is junk. So just going to get some baseline measurements and see what kind of uh, depth we're dealing with as far as the front end clearance. Um, and then get started on installing the new Warren Elite front stubby bumper. Alright, just set a straight edge across the front there. Kind of straight, so we're right about uh, nine inches. Yep, nine inches, nine and a half. So from the grill to the front face of the bumper, nine and a half inches. This is actually sticks out a little bit more, so let me get this there and see. That's 11 inches. There you go. The most this sticks out is 11 inches from the base of the grill. So following uh, Warren's instructions and pretty much every bumper instruction is going to pull off the underside uh, plastic splash pan because it's not really a skid plate on this thing. Um, and then the the fascia right inside here, this plastic trim, and then get behind the bumper, start pulling out the bolts and remove the whole front end. The new worn bumper does not reuse the fog light, so I don't need to deal with pulling out that harness or anything like that. Also doesn't reuse these recovery points either. Same as the rear bumper. First step before I do anything is pull out the new bumper. This is just opened. Looks pretty funny, like it's wrapped in uh, someone's old blanket or something. But I'll get this unwrapped, set over here on the ground and see, make sure everything's with it. Well, that's temporarily on hold. There was no hardware in the box. Looks like um, the box had a tear down the side that I didn't notice and it must have been big enough for the hardware to come out of. This is the, the gap right here. So, yep, just contacted Warren. They're going to send out the hardware I need, so a couple of days wait. That's why you got to check before you start working on it. Wouldn't want to pull that off and drive it out with, uh, drive it around without a front bumper for a few days in case it doesn't even make here by the weekend. I'll just wait and do this later. So you see everyone saying um, when you're removing the plastic fascia to take out this screw, uh, this plastic clip and this one, but you may as well continue and take out the, uh, the back ones along here and just save them because they're the regular the regular plastic clips that the Jeep is basically put together with so pop those out and save those this front bumper is almost worthless on marketplace so um, save whatever hardware you can out of it okay 30 minutes later got the bumper off had to take off the, the plastic protector the shield underneath and then uh, these bolts here on the inside here were a little trickier to get to just because of the reservoir and the angle, but got those four bolts off each um, each of the face of the frames, the frame horns. Next up, I'm going to pull the grill and do the grill mod. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. So that um, if ever I need to take the grill off to get the headlights, I'm going to do headlight upgrades at some point. I need to be able to get that grill off and that bumper and winch are going to be right in the way. So let me show you that now. Just going to remove the six clips that hold the grill on. You take a flat head and you pop up the center part and then you lift up on the grill to get out the piece. Now this bit, believe it or not, friggin' went right down inside there. But luckily in the middle of this bumper project, the clips that the bumper used to clip on are exactly the same as the grill clips. So save all of that because they'll come in handy. So yeah, just gonna pop up the grill a little bit to get the um, once the center pieces out. Sorry, just switch hands, pop that up, get that out. And now all these six upper plastic caps are removed, ready to pull the grill forward. Now with the grill off, there are six of these little tabs. You see this one's got the clip stuck on it, this one doesn't. Some of them stayed inside the grill. But I'm gonna leave this outside one and this other outside one and then trim off this little plastic riser just with some um, side cutters and get those four middle ones out of the way so that then to release the grill from the center section you only have to pop out the outside edge and the right outside edge to get the grill off. There's one done. I'm going to try and show you this in 
real time it literally could not be any easier I mean it helps that it's probably helps that it's 90 degrees in here right now but there you go get that knocked off so yeah I'll just make sure I don't cut off the ones I need because this is a brand new grill but um, you get the idea all right so that's pushed in real easy I'm just gonna loosely pop these in to show you so what I like to do with these is set the inside piece just so that they're not um, very far in then you just center the hole and leave that in then when they're all lined up all you gotta do is just push down the center cap to get those in and now to release the grill from the front it's just one Two. Oh, no. Yeah, let me get it a little bit closer to the middle. There. There it is. So you still got to get a little bit of pressure out, but that'll be plenty to hold in, piece, in position. And I definitely did not clean those up. There's no reason to. So um, the backside of those plastics. So there you go. That helps you get your grill on and off easier once you've got a big bumper and winch in place. All right. I thought I was going to have to wire feed these, but it looks like... I can get it in this way, kind of. So we've got to come around the corner there. A little bit more, there we go. So I'm going to get that um, bolt through there. I'm going to hold this out of the way of the other one, I guess. to hold the threads there so I can get this little keeper thing started and I've got a, 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 a deep socket and extension there we go just to knock that on since these have to be kept in place there are no studs on this bumper so I'm gonna take that off and actually I can just hold it with my hand but even if I couldn't, you can just kind of hold the end here and push that on. But you've got to make sure those are nice and tight. Grab you another one. Just to show that it's not too hard. It's not too easy getting back in here. But you see that one was way easier. You've got to remember too that the thickness of this metal and the metal it's going on, where I'm holding one of those threads, it's not going to um, actually be threaded there. There we go. Because the thickness of the steel is going to get in the way of everything else. Put that on there. There we go. Pop that off. Hold that. See, so you can kind of push it with my hand. It's just easier with the extension. There. Done. That's that side. Now I get the other side in. Up here by myself. Well, sorry, you missed a big moment. <laughs> it has a lot of uh, slotting on the uh, the bolts left to right. But anyway, that's the the first view of it. It's a lot smaller once it's on the vehicle. We'll grab the nuts and start putting this thing on. All right, so um, all I've done so far is just tightened up, well, snugged up these two, the bolts that are super easy to see um, with the electric ratchet. Now I'm gonna line up these winch support brackets that have to go down here on the inside of the frame. I wanna make sure my reservoirs and my shocks and everything else don't get in the way before I get stuck into these, because these, um, these are nylon nuts. And um, by the way, you can see the gap. Well, I can see it, but there's a gap in between the plate of the frame and the plate of the bumper where that little uh, washer keeper thing goes. So that'll end up getting crushed when this tightens up. Grab go underneath and fit up these brackets. Well, we got updates. Uh, got all the brackets in. Showing you the angle that they go. Up inside the frame, there's these little brackets that come with it, these little things to hold the head of the bolt. 
and um, yeah so I don't know what um, what grade these bolts really are because they've got the, uh, the big dome on them but um, I can tell you I broke one <laughs> I broke one of the ones up inside the um, the bracket in there so I had to run and get something that would work so that just took an hour to try and fish that in I should have just removed the bumper but anyway the bumper is on and um, next up I got to work on the skid plate underneath but it is break time so I'll get back to that I guess um, it doesn't really have a grade on there it's just got some numbers but that's what it looks like when it snaps off so I guess be careful with your torque settings because I hadn't even talked it yet didn't feel like I was applying too much pressure to it but it snapped that was fun at least it wasn't a stud, so I was able to pop it out and replace it. All right, just want to show you the um, the brackets that hold the skid plate on, which is an optional extra on this bumper. They have to go on like that, so that the, the bracket actually covers more of the bracket that comes down from the frame. And then these, these bolts are loose right now, right here, because I got to wiggle the skid plate on and get that mount in position very tight under here but there you go so I got the top I tightened up these bolts to get the alignment right of the brackets then I loosened up these two bolts here to get the skid plate you see this needs to be able to wiggle into position so now I've uh, got the winch the winch without anything installed in the subframe I mean installed under the winch plate so now I can put on the lower skid plate but um, I'm going to wait probably and do the wiring of the winch and make sure that I don't need to do something from underneath before I put the skid plate on here in a minute. All right, bumper is completely on. Winch is installed, wired up. Note to everybody, put the winch together <laughs> and wire it to itself before you put it in the vehicle. Um, I thought it would be easier to do it empty, but it was not because you can see the amount of clearance to get to the wires with my big hands it's not the greatest i mean it, it was doable but i had a few hands so that's a smithy built 9.5 gen 3 xrc i got that in a promotion a few years ago it's just been sitting got the skid plate on now i'll tell you there's five bolts that hold the skid plate up to the bumper and the bolts in the very corner just up inside here are not possible for me to get to so I'm gonna to have to grab someone with smaller hands um, or arrange some tools to get to that I did have to raise my reservoirs up a fraction because that skid plate was getting right close to it but that was easy just want to show you um, some depth let me extend this out a little bit some depth in the after shots now the end of the tow of the tow hook comes out pretty far it's at about 11 and a half inches but the bumper itself is uh, about nine, nine inches on the nose to the face of it. And of course there's more clearance in the flare. You see, that's one of the spots I got to touch up. Damage in shipping, take care of that. But I think it looks really good. It's really clean. I'm gonna get some driving lights to mount right up here on this bare area. There's nothing under here. Uh, well, just the just frame of course, but there's a little bit of clearance to put some driving lights there So I'm going to see what will fit the best And the profile looks really good so, If you're interested in ordering one of these we sell these at exitoffroad.com So check it out under the warn section and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it